quite a bit different than the previous one. I'm not quite as heavy on the, the tech, which is all good. As far as rules, eh, I'm a hacker. Other hackers out there? I'm strictly white hat though. But as a hacker, we don't often follow rules or we just go, hey, that's a rule, eh. These are my thoughts though. Please don't blame any of my employers. Uh, this may be PG-13, so if you're under 13, uh, just be warning to you. But let's have some fun. Ask questions. Uh, I like to play a game with my students. So I'm a, a university professor, and I play the stump the professor game. Try to ask me a question and I can't answer, or at least I can't BS my way through, all right? If I ever say a TLA or an FLA, you don't know, or any speaker does, please ask it in the chat. I'm just going to keep an eye on the chat. So hopefully you understand all of my TLAs and FLAs I might throw out there as a part of this. Noob starting the path on cyber getting A+, plus. so just checking Sally's chat. Good. Certifications, great way to start. Um, and I'll actually cut into that a little bit later. I was wondering though, I'm, you all know what TLAs and FLAs are. Very good. All right, we'll move on then. What the heck is a TLA and an FLA? Thank you. I was waiting for someone to ask. Three-letter acronym or a four-letter acronym. So actually an FLA is a TLA. But we like to throw out acronyms all the time. You know, like IDS, IPS, SIM. What does this mean when we're talking to a business leader? Make sure you explain it. Don't, we'll talk about that coming up. But thank you for asking. I often like to start my talks. <laughs> Pretty sure you got the three cards and bingo. Awesome. I start my talks by asking a very simple question because I have amnesia. No, no, no. This is just a fun point. Who am I? How do you know I'm not Zoom bombing this? I mean, did anyone check my credentials? Here you go. I'll show my Nebraska driver's license. There you go. How do you know who the heck I am? How do I prove it to you without compromising my identity? I mean, on the internet, no one knows you're a dog. So in the chat, trivia time, when was this cartoon in the New Yorker published? This is arguably the most famous cartoon ever in the New Yorker magazine. So put your guesses, or if you got Google skills, quickly Google on the internet, no one knows you're a dog because this is the identity paradox we're going through, we still have. How do we know who we're connecting with and can they get us a virus? I mean, if you think about it, in cybersecurity, we've been doing contact tracing for how many years? Real world is now finally catching up. So any guesses? 1993, there you go, Sally Woo and Scott. You get a prize. I don't know what that prize is. Find me and uh, actually I'll give you part of my, something for my swag bag. There was also a Brad Paisley song called Online, talks about the same thing. A friend of mine is a country Western fan. We can be anybody we want. That was part of our early banter and pluses and minuses. So who am I? Well, I'm a Unix geek, which is why I say the who am I? This is my name, or at least the name I'm using for this talk. There's some credentials that I pretend I have. Trust but verify, right? I teach here. I've been teaching here for about 10 years. I also started my own cybersecurity consulting company because a couple of years ago, I realized I'm not qualified to work many cybersecurity jobs. Seriously, I couldn't figure out why I got like 30 rejections, so I just started my own company. It's really odd. And this is all part of that cybersecurity skills gap and how you need to learn how to hack your career. I'll get into that. Uh, here's how you can contact me. So challenge number two, go ahead and Google stalk me. I double dog dare you. See if you can find my TED talk. I have the slide for my TED talk at the back of this deck. I'm happy to share this deck with you. Find out who the people are you're talking with. I actually did that to an attorney. I was going to work with an attorney, young guy too. And we're about ready to talk and I Google everybody I work with. And he's like, I don't know if I wanna work with you. You know, you, you've invaded my privacy. I'm like, 
dude, you want to be an attorney? You're an attorney and you don't know what privacy is? Next. All right, so what the are we doing here? Trying to figure out how to be successful, but sometimes you need to learn how to suck to learn how not to suck, right? We're reliving the same days over and over again. I love quotes. I'm an old Yankees fan. So if you don't know, I actually grew up in New Jersey. It's taken me forever to get rid of the Jersey accent. But if I say museum or coffee, you'll hear it. So often I go into a company and I'm performing a security assessment. And actually they say this to me, we suck at security. You know, we're doing all of these things wrong. And basically this is their security plan. Anyone else have this as a security plan you know, on the back of a cocktail nap napkin saying we're pwned? Uh, thanks to Mike Rothman, I stole this idea from him. He had a blog on this maybe like eight, 10 years ago. What is our security plans? Uh, or as a security professional, we go into an organization and we basically keep saying, you suck. So if I am continually, so thank you, Sally. You know, if I go to Cassie or Pierre or Rain and just keep saying, you know what, you suck. You're terrible. You're not doing anything right. How long are you gonna listen to me? It'll be like, talk to my hand. Or you get one of this, I get this from the business leader. Thank you for coming. And it's like, thank you for coming and they're shaking their head. One of the big reasons why we suck, by the way, we global, we even potentially as individuals, we're our own worst enemies. We all like to take shortcuts. We all get complacent. We all get too busy and forget things. We forget the minute details or we make things so complicated is where it gets rough. So we need to figure out how to uncomplicate things. Let's talk about how to suck. Um, I do have a question for you. <laughs> you don't, good. And you need to keep saying that you really don't. And none of us do. Uh, we're all works in progress. And what I've learned is that when you admit that you have room for improvement, it completely disarms people. It's actually from How to Win Friends and Influence People. Have you read that book, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, written in the 30s? It's one of the better hacker books out there. But Ron, that was written in the 30s before computers. <laughs> yeah, 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 I get it. But it's a perfect, perfect book for social engineering. Take off your black hat, put on a white hat, or swap it. Put on, take off the white hat, put on a black hat, and it's exactly how you can social engineer people. Dale Carnegie's tip is when you admit a fault, it disarms it. You know, talk about that white elephant in the room. But let's talk about some of the areas where we have room for improvement. First, I'll talk about Groundhog Day. You know, stuck in that infinite loop. How do we influence people? I've talked with CISOs throughout the world. Quite often, their biggest challenge is how do I sell what I do? How do I influence decision makers to be cyber smart and cyber safe? Forget about the secure stuff and the hard stuff. I'll give you some tips on leadership and influence as well. We focus on the wrong things. I was watching a, a chat in link, on LinkedIn a couple of weeks ago. Dan Kelly, follow her, awesome lady, was had a, a link to a, an article how we often like to focus on the really technical things because that's really cool, but we miss the basics. That's what I mean. Well, go into this a little more, how to better communicate. Ooh, how many of you either listening now or listening uh, through the webinar, through the recording, how many of you attended Chris Roberts session yesterday? Okay, if you didn't, pause, go back, listen to Chris Roberts, come back, listen to mine. We have some overlap. He also mentioned the importance of communications. And he's a Scotsman. Stress. We all are going through it. You know, people are like, how are you handling not being busy during COVID? I'm like, I'm on a different planet. I've never been busier in my life. How about you? We often find this in security as well. We're know-it-all. We try to pretend we know everything. We have the imposter syndrome, right? 
or the other no. You know, we're the office of no. Hey, security, can we plug this in? No. But it'll improve, no. And then we have shadow IT. We don't always know what we don't know. Complacent, and I do have some fun things on my slides. Yeah, as far as procrastinating, we all do it, but complacency is often an enemy of security. How many organizations or even people think, oh, it'll never happen to me. I don't have anything of important out on the internet. Yeah. Oh, I, I hope we're never breached. I hope my identity isn't stolen. All right, if when it is, do you know what to do about it? Hope is not a good strategy. How many organizations do you run into like that? Well, what we're stuck in is what's known as Groundhog Day. This was a panel I did with Mike Rothman, Dave Lewis, um, missing out a bunch of other, uh, Rich Mogul. We did it at RSA like 2008 through 2010. Jack Jones has a talk on Groundhog Day. Diane Kelly has a talk on Groundhog Day because we're all living in Bill Murray's world. Everything old is new again, or everything new is now old again. Do you ever do this when you're talking to people? When I used to go out and have a social life, yeah, what do you do? And, oh, I do IT and cybersecurity. That must be fascinating. It's all brand new. No still based on a lot of the old stuff. Or I'm going to pull this up because I can't speak French. Let's see if I can get this to work. Ça change plus, c'est la même chose. Say that again. Plus ça change plus, c'est la même chose. Anyone speak French here? What did I just say? <laughs> no? Okay. Well, let's see how fast you can again use your, well, you didn't realize that this was interactive, did you? Please use your Google skills. What did I just say? Trust but verify. Don't trust anything I say, please. I'll bring it up in a minute. Let's see, can someone find it? Going through the self-help. Yeah, well, we need to help ourselves, but then we need to reach out and help each other. So what is it? It's the more things change, the more things stay the same. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Everything we do today is still based on the same philosophies and concepts we've had forever. forever. Let me show you an example. How many of you have read this book, Cliff Stoll's The Cuckoo's Egg? So raise your hand, put it in chat. Um, I, I warned you, I'm a college professor. I give homework. If you have not read this book, you now have homework. Go find it read it, particularly if you're entering the field. It's a history book. It's actually nonfiction, but it reads like a spy novel. See, quick story, Clifford Stoll is a hippie from Berkeley, California, astronomer. Back in the 1980s, he couldn't get a job as an astronomer, so he took a job as a mainframe administrator. And for those who don't know, mainframe is just like the old cloud. I know, I'm simplifying. Okay, two weeks after he started, the boss came up to him and said, hey, Cliff, we have a 75 cent billing error. Someone used 75 cents worth of the mainframe processing time. We want to know why. Long story short, Cliff Stoll tracked that little error to be Russian spies in East Germany trying to get secrets, military secrets from Lawrence Livermore Net Lab, the secret lab next to Lawrence Berkeley Lab. This is actually from his talk he gave like three, maybe four years ago at a SANS conference. Go watch his, the YouTube about it, read the book. These are the slides, the yellow thing you see on your screen, the 17 June briefing, I think this was 87. These are the slides he gave. How many of these questions are still true today? You know, what, 20, 30, 35 years later? particularly this one at the bottom. Why are we still working on this problem? Okay, for those who are entering cybersecurity, do you realize that our job is to work ourselves out of a job? Think about it, if we help someone be safe and secure, they don't need us anymore, right? So we have a vested interest in making sure they stay insecure. It's that really weird 
paradox? How do we work around it? So what I do is I tell people my job is to work myself out of a job knowing I never will. I'd love to work myself out of a job, please. Another common issue, and I'm just gonna put my glasses on, otherwise I can't see chat. In your to read stat, good John. Wonder what the Cray password was. <laughs> Watch the video. A common challenge though, we see is the lack of respect for security professionals. You know, you, they get hired into an organization and you know, who's your security person? Oh, they're sitting over there. Uh, is uh, Dr. Spafford in the room? I know he's speaking later today. Not surprising if he's not, giving him a shout out. Another classic book, it's called Practical Internet and Unix Security. Pull yours out, turn to page 39, and you'll see this quote. If you have responsibility for security, but don't have any authority to enforce it, you're just there to take the blame when something goes wrong. How many of the security pros in this talk have been there? It's called the security figurehead. You know, you just sit there, you, you do stuff, but when the company gets breached, it's like, oh, Ron, you didn't stop the bad guys from getting in. It's like, but I had no power. I have no influence. You didn't, you know, I have responsibility, but no authority to punish anybody. Exactly. CYA. You know what CYA stands for, by the way? Typing mine in the chat. And if I missed up my typing, I, yep, I got it. Challenge your assumptions. It's not just about covering your assets. Assumptions often kill us. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. I often bring this quote up in talks and it's fascinating how many people have never heard it. This has been around for a long time and how many people are still in it. They're like, that's my job. If you're looking to get into a cybersecurity career, make sure you're not going into this type of a job. In the interview, ask, what type of authority will I have if I find something? What, how do I work to help the organization grow, be more cyber safe and secure? Another common problem and why we suck, we don't know where our stuff is. Okay, so homework, use Nmap or Fing, Use Nmap or Fing to check out your network, home network even. How much crap is on your home network? All the different devices, you know, all the IoT, Internet of Things out there. Anyone have a, a thermostat, by the way, or the doorbell? I love my thermostat, by the way, because, you know, I'm remotely set. I know, there's a risk. Common problem, though, is not doing the inventory. Okay, so quiz time. What's the first step? in the Center for Internet Security, critical security controls. You know, they have their top 20 critical security controls. What's number one and number two? It's also the first steps for the NIST cybersecurity framework, by the way. So the SPAF book, Practical Internet and Unix Security. My question is, what's the first steps in the NIST cybersecurity framework or Center for Internet Security, critical security controls? I'll show you. Asset management, taking an inventory. So thanks for Nathan, let me borrow his quote. Penetration testing, red teaming, digital forensics, that's all sexy. Why do I put the word hacking in my title? Hacking sexy, hacking is sell, sells. But in reality, Real security is quite boring. It's taking that time to do an inventory, create a network map, documenting your data flows. Do you know where your most sensitive data is? That's what you need to protect, particularly in the zero trust architecture. That might be another uh, bingo item, by the way. I said zero trust. I, I need to get, make sure I get DevSecOps in there as well. How about this, a, a tweet from Jim Schwar. Again, this is old, but still so true today. So, yeah, so how many Windows boxes we got? AV, 7864, desktop, 6321. Everyone has different numbers. And so it's like, what do we have on our network? How do you know someone hasn't plugged something in that shouldn't? 
This is why that complexity is often the enemy of security. Here's another reason why we potentially suck. I do this too. I, I try to watch myself. This is actually a quote from a former student, friend, colleague of mine now. You know, a couple of employees in, in fraud, they want to get into sec ops. When I explain basics, I have the habit of looking at basics as basic and lose the fact that my basic is complicated for others. Okay, so two points to this. Check yourself if you're doing it. Ask, are you understanding me? You know, is what I'm saying making sense? If it doesn't, please ask. On the counter side, that comes back to those TLAs, FLAs. If someone says something you don't know, time out. So why don't we ask questions? We're afraid of showing our ignorance. Actually, it shows your strengths when you ask questions. I get this all the time in the classroom. Students are, are really shy about asking. It's good to ask questions. Other parts of our life in cybersecurity. Oh, the requirement in security presentations, thou shalt have a Dilbert cartoon, check. So many of us regarding stress have to deal with criticism, rejection, holes, and then just the pressure of the job. We need to keep all of the bad guys out while keeping the lights on. That can be rather stressful on how to do that. Okay. I thought I had closer to 11. Uh, we're redoing the same thing. So let's go into why not how not to suck at cybersecurity. And I'll just jump right into it. Uh, start with why, what does that mean? Simon Sinek, more homework. Go to startwithwhy.com. Understand what's important to your people. Why do we need to do security? Well, because we need to secure stuff. <laughs> That's roundabout thinking. Why do we need to secure stuff? Well, we don't want the bad guys in. Why don't you want the bad guys in? Well, they'll steal our stuff. Okay, why would they want to steal your stuff? Because it has value. That's the five whys of problem solving. Find your why. And then on the career side, why the heck do you want to go into this career field? Now, understand why you're passionate about it. As you can tell, I am, I really enjoy doing this. But keep going with the chats, by the way. If you have questions in the chat, this is why we do security. It's part of our mind knowing we need to do it, we want to feel safe, our heart telling us we need to do it, and then the soul, the more we can bring these together. Think about TSA. Can you sneak firearms through TSA? It's been done. Not that I'm saying we should do it, don't do it. TSA at the airport is there to make us feel secure, part security theater from Bruce Schneier, right? The more we can bring this to together make security important for people. This is why security awareness training doesn't stick. It's a read made to stick, by the way. We want our security awareness training to be sticky. Study history. This is tied to the Groundhog Day. Salters and Schroeder's design principles published in 1975. We still use today, right? Keep yourself off the suspect list. Don't have access unless you need it. Economy and mechanism, keeping things simple, open design, separation of privilege. Psychological acceptability. Let me ask you this. Why do we have brakes on a car? Go ahead and put in chat. Why are there brakes on cars? Mostly, yeah, to stop. That's often the answer I hear to stop your motion. True, not that you're wrong. It's actually the way I view it is, and this is how we need to reframe our thinking to go fast. And we use brakes to stop, but if we don't have good brakes, can you go really fast on the highway? You're gonna be going really slow, you don't trust them. But if you trust your brakes, you can go 80 miles an hour. And yeah, that's the speed limit here in Nebraska. I think it's only 75 in Iowa. That's why Nebraska is better than Iowa. We have brakes to slow down in times of high risk, but allow us to go super fast. That's why we have security. Slow down during times of high risk. Our job is to make the business efficient. 
remember that. We want efficiency. Whenever I can tie efficiency back to security, it helps me sell security. Another presentation, William Hugh Murray, one of the first CISSPs, he gave this about the Tower of London. He happened to be traveling there and he realized, hey, everything I learned about security I could use, I learned with the Tower of London. Look this up, Google it. He has his videos out there. Again, from 2002 and see how many things have changed. This one's always a fun one. I like to show my students. What does this come back to? Well, oh, by the way, I swear I heard Lincoln say this in 2006. Anyone else hear Lincoln say this in 2006? Comes back to, and I'm not gonna say the Russian, trust but verify. We need to trust to survive as a society, but it's okay to double check. Like anything that I'm saying, always double check. Leadership is often where we're missing. We, we focus on bad things, what, we're, what went wrong, when instead let's focus on what is going well. So again, I'll go to a business and they say, you know, they tell me, we suck at security. Invariably after talking with them for a few minutes, I'm like, actually you do pretty well. You have room for improvement. Let's focus on what's going well. Build on it across these other areas where you have improvement. That goes a lot farther to learn from success to improve on failure. Find something you like or appreciate. This is also part of social engineering, by the way. Yeah. Hey, I like your hat. Hey, I appreciate your shirt. Or hey, you know, the way you have this set up is working. It actually creates better likability. Ask questions. Ask for help. Actually get them on board. When I'm talking to high school students, I often start with this, and I'll ask you. How many of you have an Aunt Sally or Uncle Joe in your life? You know, that person that comes up to you and says, oh, who should I pick on now? You know, Sally, my computer's broken. Can you help me fix it? We all have that Aunt Sally or Uncle Joe in our life, right? Yeah. We're our own tech support for our local community. Um, but the important part is getting out you know, if you don't know how to fix something, that's why a Discord community like we have here. I'll often get questions like that. And it's like, I have no idea, but I post it out in a chat. Collectively, we have great answers. So don't be shy about asking for help. Keeping life simple. We so often just say no, exactly. We like to complicate things. We like to make ourselves appear really smart. Simplify whenever possible. Leading by example. If you have not read this book, more homework, this is arguably the most popular cybersecurity book that has nothing to do with cybersecurity. I've heard it quoted for the last dozen years. Robert Cialdini's, Dr. Cialdini's, six te uh, influence techniques. Likeability. You want people to like you. If they like you, they'll listen to you more. Authority. If I put on a suit coat right now, I can then show authority. Reciprocation. Let's see, I have a toy. You know, forever can answer the trivia question, you get my toy. That's reciprocation. Why do vendors give away toys at conferences? Because you feel like you need to do something in return. Social proof, four out of five cybersecurity professionals say, everyone else is doing it. Scarcity, yeah. Buy now, it's only available for the next 10 minutes. And then commitment and consistency is getting people to sign. Why do we have people sign the acceptable use agreement? Because when people sign, they're much more likely to actually follow those rules. Dealing with politics is often a common challenge I've had to work through. You have multiple decision makers, you have four directors, and each of them are making decisions on different parts of the organization. Who owns that risk? You need to find out. Determine who that informal leader is though. Sometimes there's the person who's been working in the company for 15 years that is not a decision maker, but everyone listens to him or her because they've been there that long. 
seek them out. Try to facilitate, learn how to facilitate, bring consensus, you know, let's make a deal type of idea. You got to do your homework. Learn about the people you're working with. As Chris mentioned yesterday, bring them donuts and coffee. Uh, stalk them a little bit, just a little. You know, who are they on LinkedIn? And then find a way to build rapport with them. Um, what I tell my students, I like to depress my students. I, I mentioned two things. One, homework begins after you graduate. If you think you have a lot of homework in school, wait till you're done. You know, the stacks of books. And then two, the real test is IRL in real life. You, you know, in a class, you may be asked, so what's the TCP three-way handshake? And you're like, I can just wiki that. What do you do when you're in an interview? And the interviewer trying to text your security knowledge. Uh, what runs on port 22? Can I Wikipedia that? Nope. So what does run on port 22? Quiz time. And then how to handle conflict. Good book on crucial conversations. Woohoo, SSH. Understand who owns the headache. And I'm closely wrapping up. If you have questions, please put them in the chat. Use this though, who owns the problem? Do you own the problem within the organization or is it someone else? Could it be a systems administrator or a network administrator who's just fighting for their job, fighting to keep the lights on? They're the ones who may be woken up at two in the morning. They're the ones you bring the donuts to. So, and Travis, you have a, a great answer there. What's the number one answer whenever someone asks you a question in cybersecurity? Same thing with the legal profession. Put it in chat. It depends. Yeah. No, it, this is why you need to ask it for yourself, your situation. Who is the one who's going to have to go through the greatest amount of pain? And then your job, try to reduce that pain. This I stole directly from Chris's talk yesterday. You can see, literally. Uh, I just really liked the point he made here, how we're all in this together. Wasn't that a Disney song? Anyway, I won't sing, I promise. It takes all of us working together. So share, share what you are learning, share your problems. And don't worry that someone's gonna think you're ignorant or, well, shouldn't they know? No, not if you're asking honestly. People love to help out. We're not gonna to solve today's security problems in and of ourselves. We can solve them though as a community. When in doubt, you can also cheat. Say what? You're a professor, you just say cheat. Yes. Um, I love Lenny Zelter's cheat sheets, more homework read his cheat sheets. I got the idea for this talk from him. He actually has a cheat sheet on how to suck at cybersecurity. I wanted to make sure we knew how not to suck. Other way to cheat, learn how to social engineer. Go to the OSINT framework. If you have not seen this website, check it out. Um, check, make sure it's a valid website. Go to virustotal.com first, put the URL in virustotal.com, make sure it's safe, and then go to OS framework, OS, OSINT sorry, OSINT framework, and you can learn how to find people's names, phone numbers, emails, all sorts of really dangerous information. Oh, ethics, ethics. Remember what Spider-Man, actually it wasn't Uncle Joe from Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. So don't do anything I, that could be dangerous. Take advantage of free stuff. This is from NIST. So if you're wondering how to convince attorneys, HR people. And again, I'll make these slides available. It's National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. I can't believe no one said Happy Cybersecurity Awareness Month. If you are creating a security awareness program, and it doesn't have to be for a job. So I know we were gonna talk about careers and it's like, well, how do I get a job if I don't already have a job? Volunteer somewhere to help build their security. And say, if I help my church, my community group, a nonprofit. If I can help you secure your stuff, will you give me a reference? That could be worth its weight in gold. 
And then you can take directly from National Cybersecurity Awareness Month to stay safe online. They give it away for free, sans copyright, without a copyright, because they want the message to get out. Let me see. Because it's never a happy month, people really... <laughs> True, if people would learn to be cyber safe, we wouldn't have jobs, right? That comes back to that. Uh, quickly to getting into careers, takes three areas to get a job in cybersecurity. You need those tech skills, a lot of great tech talks. Functional knowledge, like learning how to work within healthcare or manufacturing or retail or finance. That's that functional knowledge. Personal abilities, the ability to communicate. Create a blog, create a podcast, create videos. That actually is a great thing to show with your resume, show people who are hiring that you can communicate. Other three parts, someone mentioned early on, they're getting certs, that's part of it. So it takes three things, education, some type of a degree. Why do you need a degree? You don't have to have a degree. With a degree though, you learn how to learn. We can't know it all, we're always learning. So with a degree, you learn how to quickly learn something new, which you may not get with a boot camp or a cert. And then of course, experience, that hands-on. You can do it yourself too. Build your own hands-on lab. What do I think about boot camps? You get out of it what you put into it. It's usually like drinking from a fire hose. Before you go into the boot camp, do your homework, learn, do homework during the boot camp, ask questions. Be proactive and engaged as a part of it. In and of itself, they're not necessarily bad, but if you're just passive and it's like, I need to get through this boot camp. I know I only got a couple minutes left. Your turn. Get out a piece of paper and a pencil. Write down what's working well with your career or within your organization. Where do you have room for improvement? We all have room for improvement. Determine for yourself, but ask someone too. You know, hey, what should I be working on? Have your own trusted advisor. From that, then you can develop your own goals. I actually have a blog on this, taking from the One Minute Manager, the old book by uh, Spafford and Johnson, not Spafford, uh, Johnson and Blanchard and Johnson. This is from the One Minute Manager. All right, anyone still with me? If you're not with me, put something in the chat. It's like asking someone, are you asleep? They can't answer truthfully. As you have questions, let's see. Other questions. This is my TED Talk. Go check it out if you enjoyed this. I talk about, and I'm not actually gonna play it, gave it a year ago, how we need more hackers in our community. And I, yep, I'm just about done. Let's see, any question? No, I don't wanna show it. Yeah. Yeah. This is I was... who I am, or at least I'm who I'm pretending to be for today. Reach out, say hi, connect with me on LinkedIn. So, um, Sally, connect with me on LinkedIn. When you connect with people on LinkedIn, put where you met. I get like half a dozen LinkedIn requests. Um, and if I don't know you, then I don't always accept. But if you give me a reason to know you, and it's not just me. So anything else? Battery, time. You seem to be laughing a lot. Are you laughing with me or at me? Oh, I'm just smiling and happy. <laughs> awesome. Well, this is fun. I love yeah. doing these types of talks. Go out, be safe, share what you're learning, uh, and just enjoy enjoy your world all right yeah i was gonna say uh, we can do q a but i know you answered a lot of them in line as you were going through which is awesome i don't see any new q a but i'll give them another minute if anyone has any last minute questions yeah and then we can uh set you loose outstanding just checking i see thumbs up on the discord Good. hopefully they're just being nice <laughs> thanks scott and thank you all for interacting Good. Uh, it's really tough now just speaking to a little black dot. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's so rough. Pieces. Yes. No jokes, no interactions. I've learned how to do this from broadcast journalists, by the way. Just how yeah, to yeah. turn to the camera. It's basically yeah. good lighting and everything. Thanks again. I appreciate the time and uh, I catch you all in Discord or somewhere else. Yeah. Thanks from CornCon. Hope to see you next year. Outstanding. Thank you.
Take care, guys. All right, uh, for track two, we are about to take a quick break, and then we have coming up Grant Asplund. He's a growth technologies evangelist in Checkpoint Software. He's going to give a talk on a strategy for securing your everything. See you guys in a couple minutes. Please feel free to take this time to go buy some merch, and uh, hang on in Discord. Uh, take care. Hi. 